Hey guys, in this video we will learn about radius of gyration and how it is related to buckling of structures. To begin with, I will be explaining the concepts of buckling and radius of gyration. I will also give you some inputs on how to calculate the radius of gyration for a rotating structure and how to interpret them. So let's start with buckling. Consider a column which is fixed at one end and is subjected to axial load on top. If the load is too much for a column, it will start to bend. This is obviously a bad scenario. You would not want your column to bend due to the load you apply. This bending effect due to the applied axial load is called as buckling. If you remember from the video where I have discussed the moment of inertia, you can guess that whenever there is a deformation happening in the structure, there will be some resistance provided by the cross-sectional area of the structure against this deformation. Even in the case of buckling, there will be some kind of stability from the cross-section. But is there a way to quantify or measure this stability from the cross-section? The answer to this question is radius of gyration. Radius of gyration is the measure of elastic stability provided by the cross-section area of a structure against buckling. So how can we interpret this with stability? It's actually simple. If the radius of gyration is more, then the stability provided will be more. If the radius of gyration is less, then the stability will be less and eventually the column might buckle for less axial load. Now in the next section, I will explain the concept of radius of gyration and give you some methods to calculate them mathematically. To understand the radius of gyration, let us consider a structure which is rotating at its axis. Instead of considering its entire mass distributed along its length, let us try and replace the mass of the entire body concentrated to a point away from the axis of rotation at a distance r. By now you would have probably guessed it right. This distance r is called as radius of gyration. Now remember, when you replace the body to a concentrated point mass, you will have to make sure that the moment of inertia for both the variants are same. I will now derive the equation for radius of gyration. Since we are dealing with masses, let us express the equation with mass moment of inertia. The mass moment of inertia for original structure will be m small r square, where small r represents the radius of cylindrical column. Whereas the mass moment of inertia for the point mass variant will be m times capital R square, where capital R is our radius of gyration. When we equate these two mass moment of inertia and try to express the radius of gyration, we will have r is equal to square root of i divided by m, where i is the mass moment of inertia of the structure and m is its mass. Now you might ask whether it is possible to express the radius of gyration in terms of area moment of inertia. I will talk more on that in the next section. Okay. Similar to our previous assumptions, to express radius of gyration in terms of area moment of inertia, we will have to replace the cross section area of the structure as a thin surface around its axis of rotation. Also remember, here as well, the area moment of inertia for both the variants must be same. If we follow the same procedure as discussed in previous section, to calculate the radius of gyration, we will get r is equal to square root of i divided by a where i in this case will be area moment of inertia and a is the cross section area of the structure. Now what about the radius of gyration along all the three x, y and z axis? In this example, the z axis is along axial direction whereas x and y are the radial directions of the column. In such a case, the radius of gyration along the respective axis will be equal to the square root of area moment of inertia of that particular axis to its cross section. The area moment of inertia along perpendicular axis is called as polar moment of inertia and it is denoted by j. That is the reason for radius of gyration along z direction we have square root of j over a. To help you understand the relationship between the radius of gyration along each of these three axes, we might need to split up the polar moment of inertia. j is the sum of moment of inertia along x and y axis. Simplifying the equations, we will get r along z axis is equal to square root of sum of the squares of r along x and y axis. With this, I'll conclude the video and I hope this made you clear about the concepts of radius of gyration. If so, then please share the video, consider giving a like and subscribe to my channel for more such useful contents. Thank you and I will meet you soon. Bye-bye.